talking minutes. British Airways has won a high court battle in a last ditch bid to avert strikes by cabin crew. The first strike was, of course, due to start tomorrow. Right, moving on, it's been revealed that Northamptonshire is one of only two police forces in the country where civilian staff now outnumber police officers. It follows a huge increase in the number of civilians working at forces across the region, a trend that some claim is putting the public at risk. This report from Neil Bradford. From the reception to the post room, the control room to the science lab, even community support officers. An encounter with Northamptonshire police is now just as likely to be with civilian staff as it is trained officers. For the first time, civilian posts outnumber those of officers. The Police Federation says it puts the public at risk. If we have a major incident or a riot or something where we need police officers to be drawn out, we have nowhere to call them from. We either pay them in by overtime or we're unable to, to actually answer that need. Chief constables say civilians help free officers from paperwork and bureaucracy, allowing them to spend more time on the beat. It's a popular idea among residents. If those civilians are doing a lot of the paperwork that the policemen were doing, I'm quite happy with that mix. Take them out of the office and put them on the street. I think it would be nice to see a lot more presence on the streets than there is, to be honest with you. The figures for our region show a huge rise in the number of civilians compared with the number of officers. While the number of officers rose only slightly between 2000 and 2009, in most cases the figures for civilian staff have more than doubled. Essex has the highest number, 2,533 last year, compared with just 1,348 in the year 2000. It has a total of 3,500 officers, but only Northamptonshire has more civilians than officers, 1,319, compared with just over 1,300 officers last year. Ten years ago, the county had just under 600 civilian staff. So you're not embarrassed that, that on paper the figures show you've got more civilian staff than police officers? Absolutely not, I and mean, that's a good question. This is our plan, with the support of the police authority, to increase the number of police staff, increase police presence on the street, take police officers out of the back office. This was the delivery of a plan to provide the best services, given the fact that we are in difficult financial times. The Police Federation have accused forces of putting short-term savings ahead of public safety, a claim rejected by chief constables who say civilian staff have given them more flexibility in a time of financial uncertainty. Neil Bradford, Anglia News, Northampton. Well, do stay with us this Monday evening. Coming up later, we've got a bit of a build. A man and woman from Colchester have been charged with willful neglect and fraud after police raided a series of care homes in Colchester just over a year ago. Officers went to the homes in Harwich Road and Cowdery Road in April of last year after allegations were made about the welfare of residents living in the homes. The couple who have been charged have been released on bail and will appear in court in early July. The former Ipswich Town chairman, David Sheepshanks, has been given one of the biggest jobs in English football. He's been appointed acting chairman of the Football Association, along with Roger Burden. That follows the resignation yesterday of Lord Treesman after a Sunday newspaper published a conversation in which he alleged Spain and Russia were planning to bribe referees at this summer's World Cup. The Essex cricketers Danish Canaria and Mervyn Westfield have been questioned by police investigating match irregularities. Canaria, the Pakistan leg spinner, and 22-year-old seam bowler Westfield were arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to commit fraud. The allegations surround a pro-40 league match between Essex and Durham last September. Both players have been released on bail until September while the investigation continues. The world's largest ferry has gone into service in Essex. The Stena Hollandica will be operating on the Harwich to Hook of Holland route. It's hoped that the extra passengers it'll carry will hope boost the local economy. Lorna Ramsey has the report. All shapes, all sizes. Harwich International Port has seen them all. But the people of Harwich have never seen anything of this size. This is the largest ferry in the world, and passengers on its maiden voyage from Holland last night were suddenly impressed by its size. Is it big? Yeah. How big? Um, this big. Actually, where we came off, we saw these enormous yeah. trucks going off. Coming off yeah. So it was really, really even bigger than I thought it was. Because you didn't feel the movement of yeah. the water, and I didn't really have... Sometimes you went like, oh. 
Yeah, That's I didn't. The burn. That's the I didn't burn. really had a feeling that I was on a boat. Yeah. This is the first of two new super ferries that will travel between Harwich and the Hook of Holland. The next one will sail in the autumn. They carry 230 cars and 1,200 people. And there's even a dog kennel. Uh, you've got five, almost 540 cabins on board, almost 1,400 beds. I mean, th those figures are like the biggest hotels in London. So, yes, she is big, uh, definitely. <laughs> a boat train branches off to Harwich, East Anglia's only passenger port. It was here that the first passengers sailed to Holland in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. This film about the passenger service between Harwich and Holland was made by Anglia Television in 1960. But things have changed a bit since then. The ship will take an average of 40 cars. Nowadays, they shape. take nearly five times that amount. And then you didn't drive in, you got lifted in instead. As did the horses. So some things might be different now, but others aren't. One of the most vital jobs of ferries hasn't changed, reuniting family and friends. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Harwich. And you can see loads more of that fascinating footage showing Harwich in the 60s on our website. Yep, the address is on your screen there, itv.com forward slash Anglia. A doctor from Norfolk who's being diagnosed with a brain tumour has just set sail on a three-month journey around the British Isles. Josie Phillips, who works at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital, started her trip from Ipswich on Saturday. Kate Prout caught up with her and her husband at Wells Next to Sea today. Pumped up and ready for the trip of their lives. Josie, a 27-year-old doctor, has already made a remarkable journey just to get here. Diagnosed with a brain tumour six years ago, she's already had three operations, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Going through something like this makes you, you know, you feel so down and grotty and life kind of doesn't have a lot of purpose that I feel like I needed to just kind of set myself a challenge to have something positive in my life. But I don't want my disease to kind of take over and be the only thing that I am. And I'm not going to let something like this stop me. I think I'd feel like the tumour was beating me if I, if I did, so... Instead, she is beating her illness, learning to sail with husband Roger and planning to raise £25,000 for brain tumour research in the big sea. At high tide tomorrow morning, Josie and Roger will come up Wells Harbour and head north up the coast to Grimsby for the second leg of their 2,000-mile journey. They left Ipswich's Fox Marina on Saturday and are planning to sail anti-clockwise around Britain via the Caledonian Canal from Inverness to Fort William and the east coast of Ireland, finishing the final leg from Harwich to Ipswich, hopefully on Saturday the 28th of August. She does most of the stuff on the boat, so um, I, I just sort of help her with the, with the decisions and um, working out what's going to get, what's going to happen when. They won't be alone on the high seas, keeping in touch, of course, via a blog on the internet and Twitter. Josie is battling her cancer through sheer determination and bravery. Battling the great British weather, well, that's another matter entirely. Kate Prout, Anglia News, Wells Next Sea in Norfolk. It certainly is. Seven abandoned puppies are looking for a new...